So I'm going to measure my center, find my center. We'll level that line up. I'm going to mark out my height, which is two inches below the top of my header. And I'm going to draw out my rise, which is seven inches down from there. Now I'm going to level the spring line height right across right now. Okay, so I've leveled my uh, spring line across the whole surface. This is the actual height of the finished arch. My, my rise is seven inches. In order to lay out an elliptical arch, I'm not going to actually use a wire. I'm actually using a piece of cable. And in this, on this cable, I have two knots. I have one on this end and one on the other end. And they are 36 inches apart. That's the width of this opening. What I did was, I actually held the wire so that it was the width of the opening, and that's where I put the two knots in here. So this is actually, the, the two knots are the distance apart is the length of the run of this arch, which when you're working on an elliptical arch, that is called the major axis. Um, so that's 36 inches. Half of 36 is 18, and that's called the minor axis. Now, that's important because the minor axis is what's going to determine where we bring this line in, which you'll see what I mean in a minute. But So right from the very height of my arch, I'm going to take my tape measure, and I'm going to put it right on the height, and I'm going to move it over to the, to the spring line. And where 18 inches hits, I'm going to put a mark. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. So the length of the minor axis comes from the very top, and I just bring it right over this other edge where the spring line is, and I put a mark at 18 inches. So this distance from here to here is 18, plus another 18 is 36, which is the width of your opening, which is your major axis. So now I take this cable with the two little knots in it, and I attach it to the spring line Just put a screw right through that one knot, and then the knot that's 36 inches apart, I put another screw. So now this has quite a bit of slack in it. If I pulled it back out to here, it wouldn't have that slack. So just by moving it in approximately an inch and three-eighths from each edge, I get quite a bit of slack in that wire, in that cable. Now. You'll see that when I pull this wire up, I'll just do it with my pencil, it actually comes out right center. So now my minor axis, 18, and 18 on each side. So when, you, when I move this pencil along this arch, along the wire, it always equals 36 inches, which is the length of my major axis. But the radius of this circle is constantly changing. When I get to the very right-hand edge of this ellipse, the radius is actually about an inch and three-eighths. When I get right up to the very top of it, it's 18 inches. So you'll see what I mean as I swing this along. As I get closer and closer to the edge, you can see how the radius is getting tighter and tighter. So there you have an ellipse. It's done with a cable, and you can see how tight the radius gets right towards the very end, but as it approaches the center, it becomes a larger and larger radius. These are particularly nice arches because they actually open the opening up even more than a segment arch, because 
I actually have a little bit more headroom because this arch actually goes a little closer to the ceiling throughout there. So it's a really nice arch. Because this radius gets so tight right on the end, it can be a little bit difficult to bend your quarter bead around. So I suggest if you're going to do a bunch of elliptical arches, to start out with the smallest arch that you have and make sure that it's going to work. Um, if it doesn't work, you can always make that a little bit larger uh, radius by raising, by increasing the height of your uh, rise. Like I only have seven inches, and if this wasn't quite enough for me to, to uh, bend my corner bead around, I might increase that to a 10 inch rise, and that would help. So always start out by laying this out on the smallest arch to make sure it's going to work there. What I want to point out here is that the segment arch and elliptical arch um, both have the same spring line. And like I mentioned, both of these two arches, no matter what width opening, can always have the same height and the same spring line, which, which is relatively important. That way when you walk into the room, they're all going to look quite similar. So there's the three different types of arch. The elliptical arch that has a constantly changing radius. The segment arch, which is just a segment of a larger circle, so it's actually a radius arch, but just a segment of that circle. And then the first arch we did was actually a true radius arch, which is basically a half circle arch.